good afternoon everyone now we are going to start with the procedure it 66 year old male patient with chief complaints of poor urinary treatment since three months non catheterized on diary grade 2 prostatomegaly on usg post is 144 cc and uh, 41 grams of prostate on urophrometry voided volume is 464 and mfr is 15.5 First of all, I would like to thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It is a possibility to be in and uh, thank you, Wizzone and the Yukon. Today, we will be presenting an I10 device. So, let, let us first uh, see what the device is. So, this is an implantable titanium retinol device. I is implantable, titanium TI, and is for retinol, and D is a device. So, this device has these three struts which makes a Mercedes shape incision onto the prostate at 12, 5 and 7 o'clock and then this is the lip which is there uh, to anchor the device not, uh, in the area yeah, of the prostate. The device also has a retrieval suture which is looped around the penis and then you retrieve this device after 7 days or 5 days of the placement of this device. Uh, Apart from this device, we need a minimal equipment. This is a 19 French cystoscope for Olympus, and this is what is required as an instrument. And now we'll be showing you the case. Uh, what would be an ideal case? A patient who is sexually active, wants to preserve his ejaculation. A patient who has a smaller prostate. Younger men who have a high blood pressure. So these these are the patients where there is an absence of medial lobe a smaller gland and a high bladder neck which are ideally suited for an ITI uh, device. So, um, oh, we, are, we haven't just reached the... Can you connect the end of you now? End of view is the end of view connected? Connected. Yeah, so we are inside. There is a slight medial lobe on this side. And one can see a trabeculated bladder. So now the bladder has to be partially filled. Can we have the device? So this is the device. Now important thing is that uh, you have to focus here. So this is the device which uh, has a blue marking and a white marking. So the blue marking has to be at 12 o'clock and then this is a knot. You do not have to open this knot till the device is inside. Okay. So this is a device. We will be pushing the device by once the device is inside, there will be a give way sensation. So now there is a give way sensation and the device is inside. Once it is inside, we take out this assembly. Now, Now we'll go inside again. So now once now you have to reposition the device. This device is inside the bladder. So you reposition it by putting the the blue part above. So the blue has to be seen at 12 o'clock facing you. Now you come into the prostatic urethra. So this is a short prostate. This clenching effect is very important as the device is going inside. And you can see now that the lip is now coming at the six o'clock. So this is the lip. Once this lip is here, the device is positioned. So this is how the device is placed. 
we have closed the sphincter, so the sphincter is closed, this has to be seen, and then you take out the assembly. Once the assembly is out, you just open this knot and take out the device. So basically now this, for, for the retrieval and this, you need to loop this suture. The suture has to be looped, not in a tight fashion. There has to be some slack left so that it doesn't uh, have a stretch, especially in a younger patient if he has a nighttime erection. So this is how the device is. And then uh, you can place an infant winning tube if you want and the infant winning tube may be removed the next day in the morning. It may not be required in a patient who is under GA. If it, the patient is under spinal and seizure, you may put the infant winning tube. Uh, the same suture would be uh, used for a retrieval. Uh, how to retrieve this device is very simple. You use the older... So you use a older uretric access sheath. The uretric access sheath which was the, uh, the one which had a bigger caliber. So you can see here the infant vein tube goes in easily. So there is no problem in putting an infant vein tube. Do not try to put in a catheter. So just put in an infant vein tube and remove it in the morning. Okay. And one can see on table also that the urine is coming. Uh, the device has to be removed after 5 to 7 days. Uh, usually the, there have been papers and they say that even if the device is there for 3 days, it usually does the work. The patient may have initial pain or a sensation of passing urine at an That will be there for the initial 3-4 days and then it just goes on. Any other questions you have, I will be more than willing to answer it. Any questions from the audience? There is a question from the audience. Is it possible to have a cystoscope? No. Basically, that will displace the device because then you cannot control the device. So once you are once you are coming out, if you are at 12 o'clock and if you have placed the lip at the value, the device is going to open, otherwise it will not open. So the blanching which we have shown you, if it is not happening, then it means that the device has not been placed or it is not opening up. If you want to see how the device is working, you will do a cystoscopy at the time of removal of the device. Sir, what's the mechanism of action? Sir, there was once the lip comes in, if it sits there, then it then it is open. Otherwise, the lip if the, if it is right or left, then the lip has to be at six o'clock. That is the most. Important. There is one more question that uh, the, the length of the prostatic urethra is different in different patients. So, how does this device have a standard length or size? This is what I said that this device will not work in a larger prostate. So in a patient who has a 50, 50 gram or 60 gram prostate and primarily have a high bladder neck or a high riding prostate, those are the ideal cases. So on this, in the best therapies, uh, all the therapies have a place. Like in a high bladder neck, you cannot do a urolift. Because urolift is primarily when you are doing an anterior channel. And the problem in a high bladder neck is a posterior channel. In a, post in a high bladder neck, you can do this device. This is an ideal condition. In a prostate which is more than 60 grams, 200 or 120, an ideal setting will be a resume. So you have to choose your patients carefully. And in selected patients where there is a small prostate or a high bladder neck and he is keen on preserving the ejaculation, that is where you can use this device. Not all of them, not all the prostates. So, so sir, what is the mechanism of action of this device? Once we remove it. Sir, this basically causes an ischemia and uh, with that there will be a pressure ischemia. It's just like doing a bladder neck incision. So this device itself is creating uh, three incisions at 5, 7 and 12 o'clock. Just like the incisions which we used to give in a TUIP or a laser PNH. See, basically if you look at the data, then the data is of around 6 to 7 years. In the missed therapy, this is the newest kid, in, kid on the block. So, um, I have an experience of now almost a year or so. We have done 17 cases till now. But uh, my experience is very less to uh, mark on that. Uh, in one patient, the device did not work and we had to do an inhibition. The rest of all of them, 
they were off the alpha blocker so the this patient needs to be on alpha blocker for another two weeks after the removal of the device and then you can uh, be in the off the alpha blocker ashish uh, this is uh, dr kandal pia yes yeah. so uh, when we do turp sometimes we get uh, on histopathic examination we get incidentally identified cancer process uh, there are some patients where who develop cancer process in transitional zone in spite of the bsa being normal now in such a case when you put the patient on this patient if it's a high bsa so basically if there is a high bsa you need to do a biopsy uh, do a 12 core biopsy and if, if the bsa is normal only then you do a uh, then you can use this device so that question will always be there for even for a euro lymph But yeah, for, for any minimum, for for any minimal invasive therapy, so that question will be there. But uh, looking at the way imaging is, uh, the chances of finding a transitional cell, transitional zone of cancer is very minuscule. So I think even if we find it, it is likely to be a very very low risk disease, yeah, people can which may not have much yeah, significance. Yeah, people can have CA prostate and they may live with it, they may even die with it. We don't need to treat all of it. I had one patient. What happened was he was a very heavy zadagi, and this thread it came out. So you you have to tell the patient that this thread, the dressing around the thread, needs to be kept dry. If uh, so, what he did was that he he put his put down on the thread, and then the device came out. But the device was lodged in the fossil amygdala, and there was a mark bleeding. Luckily, it was the third day. So, despite the third day, the device worked for him, and he was catheter-free. Spontaneous expulsion is not there. You, the device will not come out. It, it needs considerable force. Even by a urologist, when he is trying to remove this device, needs some amount of force and maneuver to remove it. So, what I was telling was that you use a uretic access sheath. So, you thread the uretic access sheath. So, you snare the device with it. So this device has a uh, this is a snare. So this comes with with the device. So this is a snare. So you thread the thread the thread is threaded of the snare, and then you put it across the uretic axis sheath, and then you remove the device. You can even use an open-ended catheter if it doesn't have a, a channel. So usually an open-ended catheter, which we usually cut the Foley catheter and then we make it open-end. the usually have a channel of the irrigation channel or the or the infection channel so then the device removal may be tricky and it may cause bleeding if you are using just a uretic access sheet the the 14 french one they will not be able and i have a video of how to remove this device on my channel uh, on my youtube channel you can see when you do it you have to of ema and laser at five and seven of the proper you take a dissection of that Six o'clock chip. Does that make a difference here also? No, sir. We do it basically for our. Usually, if you do do a bladderneck incision and you and the median part, it is looking obstructing to your eyes. If the bladderneck incision is there, the patient is going to pass through it. So you need to ask the question to the patient whether how what he wants. He wants to have a procedure which is going to last his lifetime. Or he wants to be catheter free, or he wants to have any ejaculation preserving surgery. If he says, if he has been counselled enough, then only do this. Otherwise, go and hold it.